So this video is going to cover our drill setup, um, specifically how to get the compost extract through there, right? I, that's kind of the part I left out on the previous video here. So I'm going to walk you through um, why we selected what we did for parts here, um, some of the issues that we had, and kind of how we figured out. How so to first off, starting with the liquid delivery portion of this thing, this this cart here is a 1500 gallon um, or i guess 1800 gallon poly west bandit i guess but uh, we really like this cart this thing's been sweet you definitely want something with a cone bottom if you're going to do this extract because it's easier to rinse out and it feeds better uh coming back to the back here this thing came with a big old piston pump that would do like 100 gallons an acre which was way more than what we needed right so we replaced that with a john blue um piston pump here you can see it's a 43 pva poly and we actually have two of these last year we did have something come on corked on this pump and so it was good to kind of have an extra but this thing has been really really good and consistent at putting out five gallons uh, a product through this setup that we have it's just driven off of um, a gear drive off the inside wheel of this tender here and then it comes up into a uh, gear drive here. We did make put a bigger sprocket on here to speed it up a little bit because we were having trouble getting five gallons out of this setup. That comes back over into a um, three-way switch here, basically. And there's a mercury switch on the drill that tells it when it's either in the ground or out. It gives voltage to this switch. Uh, right now the drill's out of the ground and so the switch would be closed or whatever. <coughs> And then when they set it back down, it would open back up, right? And so, as you can see, we have a feeding off the bottom of the tank. It comes off a two inch line into a two inch strainer here. It's an 80 mesh strainer. That's about as fine as we could go. Or, uh, I'm sorry, this one's a 50 mesh. A 50 mesh strainer in here is about as fine as we could go without slugging this all the time with the extract, but it doesn't seem to be plugging the uh, metering tubes, which we'll get to in the next part of this video. That feeds up into this pump which then feeds up into a three-way valve that either bypasses up into the top of the tank or it feeds straight ahead into the drill. The other really good thing on this tender, which I would suggest setting up if you guys could, is so there's a T or there's two bulkhead fittings at the bottom of this tank. It goes into a Honda pump, which we can use actually to transfer back out of this tank. We can use to agitate stuff or we can use it to load back into this tank, which is what we're doing now, basically. And the other good thing with this Honda pump is we have it rigged up so that we can take this fitting um, that feeds up into the drill off of here and then we can hook it in to this fitting here on the pump and we can just let that run and check all of our runs to make sure they're not plugged. Otherwise with these ground drive pumps there's really no way to check all the runs while you're sitting, right? So, so that's the cart portion of this. Um, like I said, there's a transfer pump there. There's two two-inch valves coming off the bottom of the tank that feeds into a strainer. And then we did figure out now agitating that stuff for just a little bit with this pump after it sits for a while stops us from having slugs in this strainer, which we've had trouble with in the past after it sat. So, so now we just agitate it just for a minute. You don't want to over agitate stuff or you kill some of the bugs, right? But remixing it gets everything back in suspension and then all that heavy stuff that's kind of settling out those fines that's where a lot of the fungus and stuff is if you look at it under the microscope so up onto the drill portion you can see it's feeding a three-quarter inch line up into these surefire manifolds that we have here if i come around the front you'll see these manifolds all have these floaty balls in them when things are feeding through each run those balls float and if it's plugged they don't float this is just a really quick way to check first off if you have flow at all um, right from the tractor cab and then secondly if you have any individual run not flowing one of those balls won't be floating and then we can go find the run back there they did label all of these runs with numbers that correspond with the runs on the top of the towers which is really nice for finding plugs so feeding out of that tower are all of these quarter inch black hoses right that are coming out of that manifold setup up there those hoses just follow the primaries down and then we just branched off of each primary right at the tower and follow it out just like you would with the secondary hoses and then when you come down 
and follow this quarter inch hose down. This is the most important part for not plugging, I think, is instead of using orifices, we went with these metering tubes. All of these tubes are the same length, these little gray tubes, and they have an orifice in them that's about, if I remember right, it's like three times as big as what a standard flat disc orifice would be. They can do that by using the friction in the tubes instead of an orifice. And, and so that gives us a lot bigger diameter thing to not plug. And we don't really have much issue at all with these plugging anymore, now that we filter that stuff out of the extractor, especially. These are just check valves that let you keep pressure on the line that comes in that kit. We got all this from Surefire Egg. Um, and then these tubes then splice back into some black plastic hose because these all have to be the same length. And then you're gonna have different lengths of black plastic sometimes coming off of there. So it's spliced black into that black plastic. We drop that into these stainless steel tubes that also came from Surefire Egg. These tubes originally ran all the way down off of here and dropped into the seed trench. Because of all the rocks that we have, we just couldn't make that work. It bent all those tubes and then those would plug. So what we ended up doing is just leaving these stainless steel tubes on here, but cutting them all off about here. And then we just drop the black plastic tube uh, pipe down in there. And then if a rock hits it, it just flexes and then pops back. So for you guys that um, don't have rocks, first off, those stainless steel tubes would probably be fine leaving them the way they are, but we just can't here. Um, there's probably better ways to do this, but Surefire was really helpful in getting us a kit that would work really well with this drill. And then um, I guess the only other thing I can think is that filtering that through that 80 mesh strainer coming out of the extractor, that really helps with a lot of the anything that's going to slug this stuff because anything that'll go through an 80 mesh screen will go through these metering tubes and then this stuff inherently once you extract it is going to settle out if you let it sit in the tank the fines will settle out and kind of stick together if you can agitate that before you start again um, or after you fill if you can agitate it just for a minute that pretty well has eliminated most of our plugging oh, one last little bonus thing um we tried all kinds of cameras you can see we have this expensive ass case camera here that was like well, I'll show you here in just a sec. This expensive case camera that was like 500 bucks for the cable and the camera, and we still couldn't see the balls back here floating. Um, we tried an egg cam, we ran it back here, we still couldn't see those things floating. So what we ended up doing was just buying a $100 ring camera. This thing is freaking sweet. It'll run for a whole month on one charge on the battery. We put a magnet mount on the bottom of this ring camera, and then we have one of those... Uh, Verizon hotspots, those little routers that you can buy, that just sits in the cab of this tractor, and that hotspot provides internet to this camera um, and anything else that we need actually in the cab there basically. And then we can pull up that ring camera on anybody's phone anywhere and, and watch these balls float. The other cool thing is then you can take that hotspot and these ring cameras to any site like a grain bin site and use it as a remote camera as well. So. This thing has lasted an entire season without any issues and all this dust. And for a fraction of the cost, like it was like 99 bucks compared to the freaking $500 case camera here that we couldn't even see the balls on.